there are two entrances to the Pyramid Battle uh, interface. Now, the first of these is the Pyramid Battles icon inside the Event Center. Or you have the option to access the interface by going directly to the Pyramid's battle structure in your castle. This is the large Egyptian tomb-like structure across the river from your resource zones. Now, at the bottom of the in Pyramid interface, you can view details of your previous battles, the prizes available to participants, and the Alliance rankings. After your Alliance has been registered, the Alliance leader and our four members can select members to take part in the coming battle. Up to 50 players can be picked from each Alliance. Only players who have been in the Alliance for at least 48 hours and have a castle level of at least 15 can be selected. New members to the Alliance can be selected as soon as they have been in the Alliance for 48 hours, even if they were not eligible at the time the registration or matching took place. Pyramid battles will take place on the Tuesday following registration between midday and midnight, depending on the time slot you selected. Now, players cannot enter the pyramid battlefield if they have wounded troops in their first aid tents. So, what you want to do is make sure you have enough resources to heal all of your wounded troops before the battle begins. Once on the battlefield, your alliance can only use a limited number of migrations. At the beginning, this limit is set at 20, but you can increase this by occupying dimensional towers. Now, the Great Pyramid is the principal point-giving structure. Occupy it to get points for your team. The longer you hold it, the more points your team will receive. Some structures will have nearby barbettes. Occupy these to attack enemy-occupied pyramids, much like regular barbettes attack the palace during Throne War. The Grand Pyramids are also point-giving structures and work just like the Great Pyramid. Your team can occupy these for points. The final point-giving structures are the Supply Depots. Now, the more of these that you occupy, the more points you will receive. Now, to move around, occupy a dimensional tower to expand the limit on migrations that your team can use by five. Each player is allowed one free migration to a dimensional tower once it has been occupied by their alliance. This free migration will not cost you any items or gold, but it will still use up one of your team's limited number of migrations. Now, you can occupy lodges to increase the marching speed of you and your allies. The Spirit Towers will impart powerful attack and defense bonuses on your Alliance members. You can also occupy the Relics to send out Pyramid Raiders against enemy castles. Occupy the Healing Towers to drastically increase the speed at which your wounded troops are healed. In order to successfully occupy a structure, you must hold it for a set amount of time. Once your troops take hold of a structure, a countdown timer will start. If your troops remain in control of the structure until this countdown reaches zero, then you will have occupied the structure. Once the countdown reaches zero and you successfully occupy a structure, this structure will turn either red or blue on the map. Whereas structures that are in the process of being occupied will display either a blue N or a red S. When one team has accrued at least 2,500 points, and leads the other team by more than 1,500 points, then the pyramid battle will end early and that team will be crowned the winners. If the above conditions have not been met after the regular two hours are up, then the battle will end and the team with the most points will win. Note, there's a cooldown period for players who leave the battlefield early. If you wish to continue playing after leaving, 
then you will have to wait for this cool-down period to finish before you can re-enter the battlefield. 